Hello everybody! Welcome back to Star Trek Online Roleplay. From the last video, I just video we saw me create our character Jack McCoy, the great great uncle of Leonard McCoy. You guys know him pretty well, I hope. He's the he's the original doctor of Star Trek. And unlike his his uh Great great grandson. He's not terrified of space. Hell, he wanted to be an astronaut, but he, he uh, failed in college and he's stuck as a farmer. How the fortunes have turned. So, prepare for how uh, however long the first part of a tutorial lasts, because. Oh boy! There is no, there is no editing here. This is all. My voice is being recorded on OBS, but the video has been recorded by Bandicam. We are going. There is no out. There is no second takes here. I gotta be on par. So here we go. Here's the backstory of Jack McCoy. He's a farmer. He's very honest, but he's also brutally honest. As a, far as a, there's a farmer saying, "We don't have time for bullshit, while well, we're shoveling bullshit." So we uh, he'll he'll take things, he'll say things pretty damn plainly and bluntly to get the damn point across. But he's also a very kind gentleman. His. His tenure in the 20th century, after being whisked away from the 21st century, from the 21st century by a random temporal vortex that just happened on Earth, or a temporal anomaly that just happened, that happened on Earth, on his field, the last one for probably an hour, he was mixed from Earth the past to the earth of the current day in this game. That was three years ago, by the time of the events of the sea unfolds. The first year, he tried to reacclimate to his new life. Didn't take. So he took an offer from a Romulan who will meet later on go with them to a Roman colony called Viranet to help with their food production. In other words, be a, a farmer on a different world. Saying this, and taking what stock he had left, he grabbed his, his two fangled, his two new phaser pistols that I'm going to claim in the game once I learn the game, but that's the, uh, it's the current, you know, it's one of the lit ones, the Terran ones. It's Terran ones. <laughs> yeah, again, this is not edited at all. This is, this is raw. I better not screw up. <laughs> so yeah, he took his two phasers, pistols, because he was allowed to carry some form of protection on Earth. And he figures, I'm going to a colony. I'd rather defend myself against critters. Against critters. Plus, he is, as he learned, these guns have a stun setting? How? They're freaking laser beams! So, yeah, he first year, he's trying to alchemate. He, here, the first year of Fearnet. Through all those times and stuff, he, uh, he now knows how to use a tricorder. He understands how the hell uh, power works these days. And bear in mind, this is the 21st century. Half the stuff he already knows. It's just the brand new stuff that he needs to learn. So, it's not like, oh, wow, it's just this new thing on the computer. It, what the hell? No, he's pretty much used to that technology already. The thing is, he's not used to 
the phasers. He's not used to uh, plasma. He's definitely not used to club ships. Or warp travel in general. So, he was a, he was a pretty damn quick study. Even though he failed in college. He, he dropped out of college. I'm going to say on his third year of college. He's a smart cookie. There's a reason why he's, he's, he's an engineer. Problem was, he just got too much for him and he quit. Before all the legal, all the bills piled up. Which, by the way, even in the 20th century, apparently he still needs a pay up. He's not happy. Thankfully, uh, he heard, of, he, he found the he had a deal with a Ferengi that, to help them with that, that, that a little bit. But of course now he's wanted in, in the Dominion territory. Oh boy, what the hell, what the Ferengi did? Future reference, perhaps. So, he's basically, so yeah, he's an ally of Baronet. This is this is this is pretty much the culmination of the second year on Varanet. He's now respected a member of the colony, even though he's human. And, and here's the best part. He is treated like one of their own. And he has learned a little bit of their language. language a bit and he does have a universal translator built into into his clothes so he can so he can cheat a little bit but but that's the thing so we're gonna start now engage please for I ramble on too much and prepare to enter scene or wait no one for more because this is the cutscene Here we go. Load the game as I turn off the fan. Welcome back! Records are going to get you a complete your train with another troll officer. Would you like to proceed to lead to the Roman Flotilla? No. You want to know why? Simple. This is a role play, madam. So, I would like to play the tutorial. What we knew is gone. Our home, our lives, all that we were, dust, blasted across empty, heartless skies. But we live. Our legacy lives within every ship we fly, upon every world we touch, in our hearts, in yours. There will be challenge. You will know fear. But you will overcome. You will survive. And answer vengeance with blood. You will do as you must. Rule cannot be handed to the faithless. Our legacy cannot be lost to villains. Bury the past to face the future. In enemies, find allies. There is no price we have not paid. No loss we have not felt. Our dead world, our long suffering, these are not ends. We are not ended. For your crew, for your people, for this new home, we must face all doubt. We must break the strong who would destroy us and overcome the impossible. We must fight against any and all. We must, we will, for we are Romulan. I, I uh, deny that claim, sir. I am human. Oh, two weeks before the attack on Vega Colony. The youngest of our kind rely on stories to know what our people were like before. Strong, secretive, warlike. We were feared. We were powerful. Then, everything changed. 22 years ago, the star of the Hobus system went supernova. The resulting explosion traveled through subspace to hit Romulus and Remus, our homeworlds. 
No one could have predicted that would happen, and no one could have stopped it. Millions died. Those who survived were scattered across dozens of worlds. One day we were citizens of one of the greatest powers of the galaxy, and the next, we were just trying to survive. Every day was a struggle if you weren't part of the militant and oppressive Tal Shiar, or ruling everything from on high like Empress Sila. For ordinary Romulans, military victories don't mean much when you're hungry. Life goes on. The Klingons and Starfleet are at one another's throats. The battles light years away don't affect us much. The Tal Shiar are the more immediate threat. They're rebuilding the Empire by force, and pressing anyone they think can help into service. But even they don't seem to know we're here. We've put down roots, and found friends. Today we'll celebrate what we've created. With hard work and some good fortune, true Romulans will once again rise to be a power in the galaxy. The first step on that path begins here. Uh, all right. Oh, hey, Dolan. Your current tasks will be displayed here. Okay, I'm going to set up those because I already know what I'm doing. Okay, so apparently uh, traits have been used. Uh, apparently I'm telepathic? Not accurate. One thing I can say for sure is that I'm not telepathic, so I'm going to remove that. Why at it? So, we're going to be here at this point. Uh, the training. Peak health. And as I look for something here. We're gonna say I can be cold blooded. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just gonna be lucky. I'm a lucky boy. And as for this, I'm gonna say we are a warp theorist or a bigger one. We're efficient, and we have, and we have, we tend to tend to our hole a bit. The IRW, yeah, pretty good. All right, so oh, and I guess we're also creative. No, watch, no. Cold blooded. Da, 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 da. Cold blooded, yeah. Uh, you know what? Rifle training. Because we are farmers. Okay, let's go over here. Yeah. Cause I'm trying to remember where did I buy the thing? Passion packs, where is it? Or... It's a bundle. I know that. <laughs> Bear in mind, people, I'm just, just trying to figure out where I let the at. Uh... What wasn't this? To get those pistols. trouble finding it. Where are we going? I don't want to have that. No. Okay, I 
とこととこと。Ow. Oh. oh, great. So the pistols I want to use, I can't use them on the third the line. Well, I guess we now know where this guy's going to line to. Okay, fine. Uh, okay. Just featured. For now. But now we'll simply just take the pistol. Okay. So. Before we start here, I'm just gonna do a really quick, make sure things are good. Keybinds. I guess so. Make sure I don't hit. All right, now, now we're going to walk to Tovin, and not just run to him. Ah, okay, here we go. <coughs> here we go. Role play time. Ah, Tovin. Fine weather today, huh? So, what can I do for you? There you are. The security chief was looking for you earlier. She said there's trouble at the vineyard. Avrak's been filing reports all night about Kellid's chewing at the vines. He's really worked up. Kellid's in the vines? Thank you, Tricorder. I'll get to you in a second. That doesn't sound right. I mean... Something must have annoyed them. It's not typical Kellid behavior. With the big celebration tonight, I think everyone's a little overexcited. Even the bugs. You should listen to one of Avrak's messages before you head out there. Uh, Tovin, I hate to break this to you, but they're bugs. I'll take something that's spooking them off from their home. Bears and team in there. But I'm gonna see what Avrak has to say. He's a good chap. <laughs> Afraid I'm blunt sometimes, but that's why I like him. You know what I always say? We don't. I don't have time for bullshit while I'm shoveling bullshit. <laughs> okay. So. Uh huh. Uh huh. I have three messages. Ah, from Avrak. Oh, he said three of them. Two of them are named redundant. Huh. <coughs> well, computer, play message one. Please tell me you'll help me. The Kellids are in the vineyard chewing through the irrigation pipes, and everyone says they're too busy getting ready for the big party to come and do something about it. There won't be any party if everyone's knee deep in water by nightfall. Get over here and help me fix this. Hmm. That is serious. Though I gotta wonder what 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 was second part what was special number two? When are you coming over here? This is getting ridiculous. No one appreciates you around here. No one. They think these crops just grow without any help from anyone. Uh, dude, you're I remember, I'm a farmer too. I appreciate you as well. Believe me, I know your pain. Tending these vines is a lot of work. No one says thank you. No one pats me in the back. They just keep asking for more. John, look, just get over here and take care of the kelts, all right? And maybe say thank you for all the work I do to keep these vineyards in shape. Tovran, look at note. Get Afric some counseling. He needs it. And make sure you say thank you to him for all the hard work he's been doing. 
I'll show you now. Once my corn is ready, you'll be, I'll be saying, you better be grateful for that corn. Because I know for a fact you guys like that, those corns in the cop. Don't tell me you guys didn't. All right, I have records number three. It's me again. Ignore the other message I sent. I lost my temper. I'm sorry. Maybe that's why you're not here yet. I really could use your help, though. These Kellogg's are chewing through everything, and they won't stop. I'm on my way, Everick. And no one here is even trying to help. They just keep bouncing me to other people. First to Tovar, then to Navala, then to you. What's that? Should I ask one of the kids? Just please come here soon. Thanks. Tovar, I'm going to help Everick. Do you hear me? Oh, Tovran. I know you're trying to get a hold of your sister, but... Listen to me sometimes, alright? Also, is she still single? If the Kellids are chewing up the vineyard, you should probably grab a pistol, just in case. i join you, but the Chief has me looking into some odd comm chatter we picked up yesterday. We'll have to catch up later. Okay, I'll see you later, Tovran. Grab a pistol, he says. I'm currently have one. It's literally on my hip. It's literally my big iron on my hip. So, hey. Well. That might be a good idea to have a plasma one, just in case. Alright. Hello, boys. Some shooting? Alright. Let's shoot from the hip. Pretty good. Aha! Take that. Let's try to stun something. That was stun. Oh, there you go. These are glass bottles. Okay, let's destroy the plasma. Let's see how that works. Okay. So the plasma has a very good shot. No, not for any. This is what I get for buying an antique, but then again, I'm also an antique. Let's put this thing away. Ooh. Alright. Boy, you need all the training you can get, believe me. Ah, Stoka. Yeah, so I'm gonna head over to him now. But, uh, you still want my corn, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be here by next week. Oh, don't worry, Stokor. Stokor. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Cody. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, Havid, how you doing, man? Oh, yeah, it's a speech. Let's give me a thing. Uh, Key, how's my porn smelling? Uh, yeah, bet. Seriously. I actually prefer one of them. You guys make the best sale. Though sadly, uh, you'll never beat uh, Jack Daniel whiskey. I miss that. 
Still can't believe, believe they're, they shut down. Oh well. Still, the Roman Nail. Best. Yes, yes, yes to Zack. That's how I got here. <coughs> Alright. Oh, I may. Okay, I'm gonna say this right now. I'm gonna change the voice a bit. Because that's actually hurting my, vo my vocal cords. <laughs> Having that gruff, very gruff voice. So. It's gonna be a bit normal. And yes, we're just walking. And yes, we're going to talk. Ah, Kadeem. Jill. Now you got me intrigued. But first things first. A toast to your health, sir, Prince. Oh. You got me my hopes up. But it's still pretty I'm good, so thank you for that, sir. I'm trying to be a less gruff here. <laughs> hey there. Ready for the big festival? Working hard? Or maybe you have time to listen to a story or two? Indeed, Daryl. Tell me, what is the origin of your people? I keep, I keep wanting to ask, but I keep, I it keeps, keep, keep in my notion somehow. So, what's your origins of the people? Almost two thousand years ago, our people were Vulcans. At that time, Vulcan was a world of war with constant struggles between the tribes. Serac changed that. He taught that peace came through logic. And if you ask me, not all Vulcans get that right. Serac said that people should master their emotions, not eliminate them. But not everyone on Vulcan wanted to give up love, or passion, or even anger. The Vulcan said, these people marched beneath the raptor's wings. Also, hi, ma'am. That's an excuse me. Anyways, continue to rock. Instead of fighting their own people, these Vulcans decided to leave in an event we call the Sundering. They boarded great colony ships and set out into unexplored space, looking for a home where they could live and feel as they wished. Eventually, those who marched beneath the raptor's wings found Romulus and Remus. They created an empire. Although we share a genetic bond with the Vulcans, we are our own people. Never forget that. Want to hear another story? Well, uh, I know for a fact your plan was destroyed. But what happened to the other Romulus? The destruction of Romulus was a terrible thing. When we lost our home and our loved ones, we lost our soul. The people who survived were scattered and leaderless. Survival was a daily struggle. There were some fights for control before Empressila took over, but I never paid much attention. That Taurus woman was never going to get far. Now, Sila and the Tal Shiar are attempting to rebuild the strength of the Romulan Star Empire, but they do so with fear and oppression. Steer clear of them if you can. Oh, uh, don't worry, Noel. I'm pretty sure they won't be coming here. I mean, what the hell will they want to do with, with Varanet? Or a Parmen call? People like us should just try to stay <coughs> out of the Tal Shiar's way. Life is more important than politics or power. There are a lot of Romulans who just wander from planet to planet because there's no place to call home anymore. We're lucky to have Viranet. This is a good place. A place to put down roots. Without that, we're just dust, scattered by the winds of fate. Want to hear another 
story. Oh, sure. I don't know what the fuck those colony. Viranat was a colony world. It used to be a big agricultural planet, growing food for the Empire. After Romulus was destroyed, thousands upon thousands of people flooded the planet. The old cities couldn't hold them all. They were scared. They started fighting amongst themselves. One night, the cities burned. Most of the survivors left. A few hung on, scrapping old ships and using them as building materials. That's how the Maori found them, about ten years ago. Indeed. The Maori was the commander yes, Tricor, of the Maori I know Lord. everyone's waiting for me. Navala was his first officer, and Devex the chief engineer. They were wandering the sector, trying to find a new home. When they found Viranat, they decided to stay. Devex kept the old warbird functional, and he used it to make supply runs and bring back other Romulans who needed a home. Navala put herself in charge of security, and the Maori. He runs the whole colony now. Devex met Tovan Kev in a mining colony a few years back. I think it was uh, four years ago. But then again, I didn't come here until two years ago, so this is not just information I've heard about secondhand. I actually have a question for you, if you don't want to hear another story first. Uh, what's your question? When did you arrive here? I know we only have a few hundred people living here, but so many come and go that it's hard to keep track. I I'm recording the stories of all the people that live here, you see. And I would love to start yours off with your arrival. Who knows? It could be something that becomes historical in a few years. I was uh, picked up by the Vrex a few years ago. A Devex recruit? Fascinating. We've had some interesting characters come here thanks to him. We should definitely talk more about this over drinks tonight. I would love to know where Devex found you. Why the hell all the old ladies keep wanting to ask me out? I know I'm over 200 years old. But I'm still, technically, I am still 25. Let me tell ya. Oh boy. Alright, I'll see you later. Ever needs me. Okay. <laughs> There's the Maori. Fireworks tonight. Oh, that's gonna be good. Ah, the fountain. Fair place to sit down and relax once in a while. Excuse me. You would think by now I'll be able to get laid, but still. But yet, uh, no one wants me. Ah, there's the fact right now. <laughs> wonder if he's got, he's got my shipment of case tractors yet. I know there's fuel on this planet that I can use. Ah, uh, Avrak. Sorry it took me a while. Finally? Which message do you... Ah, oh, never mind that. It's chaos here. I need some help. Normally we collect nectar from the local Keladin sites. Something has driven them into a frenzy. They're chewing on our irrigation system. They're flooding the vineyard. Right, I'll start repairing the pipes. Excellent, excellent. Uh, the broken pipes are obvious. They're the ones spraying water everywhere. Kelet shouldn't give you too much trouble. Uh, a few bursts from your pistol will take care of them. Ah, oh, thank you. I'll handle it. Alright, I may have to take a for space because this is a problem. Oh, wow, yeah, this, this is a problem. Get out that thing, you insect. You too.
There we go. Ah, at least it wasn't too damage. Why is these pipes above the ground? That's problem number one, but whatever. This side's been repaired. I see other people are helping the other on the other side, so we're on that front. The flooding has stopped. If those kellets come back, they'll just break the pipes again. Something's making the insects go crazy. With bugs this size, that's a real problem. And the follow might be able to Goofing off. Anyway. She knows all about kills. She's normally down by the greenhouse this time of day. Tell her to stop being lazy and keep these critters contained. Uh. <coughs> <coughs> I'll find out what Naval knows. I'll do it. Good idea. Talk to Navala. I bet she's just lounging around right now. Not even thinking about all the damage being done to my vineyard. No one around here wants to put in a good day's work. Well, except for you. I mean, I am a farmer too, pal. Don't forget that. I know your pain. Ugh, uh, better put, this, better put, put the, pest, the pistol away. And it's time now to see what the heck is causing these bugs to freak out. They're out of control. Ah, oh, Navala! And you have your rifle out. This is not good. Okay, uh, Nabella. Oh, hey, Corona. Just in time. Did you talk with Avrak? He said that I'm what? Lazy? That I've been... Ugh. He's just trying to make me look bad so he can get a promotion. Oh, that's so old-fashioned. Let me tell you what's actually happening. are going crazy. I've been working all day to keep them out of the residential areas. This aggressive behavior is new, and we need to figure out what's causing it. That means gathering samples from some of these creatures. I'll see what I can find. Mm, I might want to switch to the, the plasma. Strange temple. This metal has some kind of fungus growing on it that's similar to the spores we found on some of the Kellid carapaces. It might explain their behavior, but how are they getting infected in the first place? Also, the flying Kellids have never come out of the cavern before. This is so strange. Well, if I have to guess, someone's down there are making a mess of things. You're right. The source of the infection could be somewhere inside the cavern. Head over there and see if you can find out what's aggravating the nest. And be careful! Alright, here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ow! So for that one, shoot projectiles. Okay, we're just gonna run now. Excuse me. Ow! Okay, switch it to this one. That's better. Ow! Ow! Oh, that's that, that's kind of smart. There's a best problem in here somewhere. But where? Uh, these are already dead. I didn't kill them. Okay. What are the... We got metal, metal bugs. Are they drones? They're probably drones. If that's the case, who are they, who's controlling them? Found the question about found the answer to my question. Okay. Those are flying drones. This is definitely something else to do. And for why I know about Roman tech, this is definitely not Roman. Or human. It is. There's a sent a single out. And all right, folks. Uh, this is going to be in episode one, mostly because I'm running close to that 50 minute mark, and I have to make this video somewhat condensed. I don't want this this to be an hour long. Plus, uh, plus other YouTubers tend to do the tutorial in three different parts. So, this is the end of part one. Part two will be coming up next week. Next week. So, till then, this is DM Trouble Typhoon, signing off.